Cheryl Flowers, ladies and gentlemen. We're waiting on her to come and say hello. Okay, I just want you to come on and say hello. Praise God. If you can, if you can, praise God. Let's see if we can bring her up. Anyhow, she'll come on. Here she comes, I think. Cheryl, are you there? Hey, while Cheryl's coming up, let's uh, bring Wes on. Wes and Marisol. I know they're having a good time in New Jersey. Come on and give us a shout out, Wes and Marisol. Well, let's see. I need to hear from somebody. Ryan, can you give me a shout out so I can know that I'm getting through to you? Uh, good morning, Pastor. Can you hear me? Hey, Ryan, I hear you very well. I hear you very well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll hear from the others a little bit later on. Hey, how's your brother doing, man? Uh, well, thank you for all your prayers, first of all. And uh, he is slowly improving. And uh, he's got a long road ahead of him, but he is he is doing good. He's doing good. Praise God. He's, like I said, he's, he's just got he's just got a long road ahead of him. And I went down yesterday to see him in the hospital, and uh, I pulled out some scripture for him. And he, I, you know, he was in and out with his medication and stuff, and and I interceded for him, and I gave him I said the sinner's prayer over him, and I said the safe prayer over him, and I just. Gave him the healing verses and everything, and and I thought he was sleeping, but at the end of it all, he said, "Amen." <laughs> Praise God for that. Amen. He was just resting his eyes a little bit while you ministered to him. Good job, Ryan. You continue to visit with him, and we'll continue praying for him. God is a healer. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, we'll bring you back on in a moment. Thank you. Um, and ask you to lead us in prayer. We bring you back in a moment. You ladies and gentlemen, there's a healer. There's a healer. There is a healer. God is the healer, and he heals. And, and uh, if you're in need of healing, you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You ask God to heal you, and he will. Praise God. Cheryl Flowers knows about healing. She's a nurse, and she's a, a wonderful nurse. She's been in all kinds of situations. God has put her in all kinds of combat situations where she's seen the Lord heal. And if Cheryl can come on and give us a shout out, that would be really wonderful if she can do that. Um, praise God. And then, uh, hopefully she can do that and share us with us what she's doing. Praise God. Praise God. I think I see, do I see, do I see Zisla down in Texas? Do, is that Zisla? Zisla, if that's you, come on and give us a shout out to us, will you please? Hello, good morning, Pastor Carter. Hey, uh, God bless you, Zisla. Uh, Praise God. Uh huh. Yeah, and, and I hope this will be a. And it looks like it will be a beautiful day outside here in Texas, and so I hope more people will come uh, and enjoy Jesus in their hearts and just be filled with love on this beautiful day. Praise God. Thank you. That's Zisla. Brigance, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Midlothian, Texas, and she's a, an inspiration and a blessing and an encouragement to this ministry. I see my main man, Nathan, is on. I see his mom is on, Dustina, and uh, I see somebody from Wilmington, Delaware is on. Who do we have from Wilmington, Delaware? Is this Loretta? I see a 302 number. Uh, 302, would you come on up and say hello to us, 302? Oh, we got some shy ones on with us today. Well, that's all right. That's all right. I know it's dangerous to point people out in a ministry like this. We don't want to embarrass anybody, but if you feel led to come online later on during our chat and chew after the message, please feel free to do so. Okay, we're going to uh, get ready for an exciting our message today, um, we're going to ask Ryan Trogler to come on again. And ladies and gentlemen, Ryan's going to lead us in prayer. Then we're going to hear some songs, uh, uh, two selections from our friend Kevin Wilson down in Kentucky. Kevin Wilson. And um, 
Ryan, can you lead us in prayer? Uh, yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Ian Pastor. Good morning, Church. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another day. We want to thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins, <clears throat> ascending into heaven and to sit at the right hand of the Father. And Lord, we just want to thank you for meeting and exceeding all of our needs and providing for us as well. And Lord, we just want to ask you, to, we want to pray for the people that are in the path of that major hurricane down south. Yes, and just I want to plead the blood of Jesus all over them and make sure they stay safe and protected. And Lord, I want you to, you know, Come down and heal, heal the sick, cure the blind, here, cure the deaf, and also I'm, up, I'm still standing up a prayer for my brother. So keep him in your thoughts, please. And Lord, we just want to say we thank you, we love you, and praise you in Jesus Christ, precious. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Ryan, and and we give a shout out to Tara and Jenna and your household. And we're believing God for healing your brother. We're also believing God to protect all the people in the path of the hurricane. Okay, hey, let's hear from uh, my friend uh, Kevin Wilson. We met Kevin Wilson in Indiana just a few weeks ago, and Kevin um, um, said, you have my permission to play songs from my DVDs on your services. I thank Kevin for that, and uh, this is a uh, Kevin Wilson, ladies and gentlemen, and he's going to be singing born again and then we're going to go to don't sweat the small stuff hey Wes I know you're out there in the kitchen and you're fixing dinner and everything already but this is don't sweat the small stuff the first one is uh, to everybody and it's Kevin Wilson saying uh, born again and then we're going to have don't sweat the small stuff
was going on. I said, buddy, I know just how you feel. Cause I've been there. Wasn't that long ago. If I learned anything, it's you gotta get back on the road. Don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. Praise the Lord, that's Kevin S. Wilson. Kevin Wilson, praise God, Spiritual High Ministries in Kentucky. And I'm playing his songs because Kevin has given me his personal permission to play songs on the ministry. I know that in, in some of these um, um, some of these providers don't allow you to play anyone's music or their poetry or, or anything belongs to them, anyone who has a copyright. But uh, to all of my friends out on Facebook and YouTube and other uh, areas, we have personal permission to play the songs of Kevin Wilson. Thanks, Kevin. I know you'll be looking in at the video of this, and we pray that God will bless you, Kevin, and open up your ministry. And my friends, uh, those of you uh, in the Kentucky area, uh, Tennessee area, for your next revival, why don't you contact Kevin Wilson? Kevin Wilson. I'll give you his phone number if you want his phone number, uh, his website. Uh, I put that up on the in, in the on the message board. His website's available. You can contact Kevin and uh, at Kevin S. Wilson Band dot webs dot com, and Kevin will be glad to come and minister at your next service or your next revival. You y'all get in touch with Kevin. I know my son said, "Wow." 
dad has changed. Dad has changed, man. He's playing country and western music. Man, didn't you know your dad had country and western in him long before you were born, son? Your dad had country and western. Hey, Zisla, I was country and western long before you were born. Yes, indeed. I can get into that country and western. And once you meet Kevin Wilson, you'll be country and western, too. I mean, that brother is smooth. He's smooth as silk, man. And, and he loves the Lord. He loves the Lord. Just shake his hand one time, and you're a brand new person. Dustina says, Yeehaw! Wahoo! Yes, indeed. Dustina was there. She met Kevin. Ryan met Kevin. What a mighty uh, servant of the Lord. Praise God. Country for Christ. That's right. That's where we're coming from. Hallelujah. And we promote Kevin Wilson, and we'll promote uh, whatever you're doing. Okay, let's get ready for some word. Are you ready for the word? I put on Facebook this morning, I said, uh, the online church in 15 more minutes, one call, that's all. You tell everybody, one call, that's all. All they have to do is call this number, 319-527-4325, and they're online with the online church. And God is going to move. He's going to move through his word, ladies and gentlemen. As you listen to the word of God, God is going to bless you in a mighty way. So I want you to uh, download Hebrews chapter 3 and 4. Hebrews chapter 3 and 4. And I want to read a little bit of Hebrews now, and I'll read some more during the message. But we want to look at Hebrews chapter 3, or open your Bible to Hebrews chapter 3. And um, we're going to take a look at the Word of God. Let me get the correct graphic up here. Okay. Let's get the correct graphic up here while we're doing this. We want to download Hebrews chapter 3 or open your Bible to Hebrews chapter 3 and we're going to start with verse 7. Verse 7. Here's the Word of God. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. I'm going to, I'll be preaching today about an evil heart of unbelief. An evil heart of unbelief. We're going to talk about unbelief and how evil it is. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, Verse 10, Wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, this is a warning to us, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. Well, what's it mean to harden your heart? It means to turn away from God's word. It means to go your own way. It means to shut God out. It means to ignore the word of God. It means to do your own thing. For some, when they had heard, verse 16, did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Verse 19, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Ladies and gentlemen, that was so sad. So sad. It was so sad. Look at the scenario. God called Moses, and Moses was prepared by God, along with Moses' brother Aaron, to go into Egypt and to confront Pharaoh because God wanted to set the people of Israel free from slavery. There were over three million people, uh, Israelites, in Egypt. They were slaves. And God had heard the cries of his people and decided now was the time to set them free. And he sent Moses. 
and Moses uh, contended with Pharaoh, and Pharaoh was hard-hearted. He wouldn't believe that God uh, wanted the people free, and, and Pharaoh fought against God, and God hit Pharaoh with, pl with plague after plague after plague after plague until finally Pharaoh relented. Don't you know your arms are too short to box with God? You can't fight against the living God. Well, Pharaoh wound up losing his whole army. His army got swallowed in the Red Sea. And so Moses had the responsibility to lead three million people. And when you look at the book of Numbers, that book of Numbers is all about the census, where God commanded Joshua to take a census, count the people. And, and the real reason uh, is that God wanted to prepare a, an army to once they got into the promised land, they would have to fight some folks who didn't want to give up their land. And so there were 600,000, actually 603,350, yes, 603,350 people who were between the ages of 25 and 50 who were able to fight. So Joshua trained them train them. But then there were so many times during this journey from Egypt into the promised land to the very brink of the promised land. Moses never got into the promised land. He died before he could enter in. Uh, but the people uh, fought against God so much they complained, they grumbled, they murmured and, and, and just caused grievance. Dustin of the name of us, our subject today is an evil heart of unbelief. We're talking about an evil heart of unbelief. An evil heart of unbelief. And uh, we're going to really look at uh, verse 12 of Hebrews chapter 3. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. There's a warning that God gives to us today. Now, you may say, well, Pastor Carl, that's Old Testament. I don't study Old Testament. Yeah, and that's why you're so messed up. I mean, I'm not, I'm not coming down on you, but it's just to wake you up. You, 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 you have all these issues, all these problems, because you don't believe in the Old Testament. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're following some preacher who's teaching that the Old Testament has nothing to do it's not relevant. You need to get from under that teaching and get for, get real. Because my Bible tells me that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for reproof, for doctrine, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Some of these preachers preaching that the Old Testament is not relevant need to repent. And I don't care who you are, preacher. If you're preaching that the Old Testament has no meaning and you're a New Testament preacher, you only preach the New Testament, you need to get saved. You need to repent. You need to get saved. You need to go before God, fall on your face, and repent. Now back to this message. This message is all about an evil heart of unbelief. The people grumbled, they complained, they murmured. I mean, they caused Moses so much grief that at one point Moses said, God, kill me. If you really love me, kill me. These people are hard-hearted. Nothing pleases them. Nothing satisfies them. If you really love me, kill me. And, 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 and God knew that Moses had reached the end of his rope. And you know what? People can drive you to the end of your rope. And, and that is why it is so important, my friends, to keep your mind on Jesus. The Bible promises us that will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on the Lord. So keep your mind on the Lord. When people go crazy, when they start talking a lot of stuff, doing crazy stuff, I mean, we're in a crazy nation. we got a, a crazy government. we got some crazy folks around us. I mean, there are mass murders and hatred and all these things going on. It's a mixed up crazy world. But the Bible promises that he will keep you in perfect peace. Whose 
mind is stayed on the Lord. And so uh, if, if you're hanging out with a lot of people who are full of unbelief, they don't go to church, they don't want to do anything with Jesus, you need to get you some new friends. You need to start hanging out with some believers, with some blood-washed believers. I didn't say hang out with people who go to church, because you can go to church until the moon turns green. But if you're not saved, going to church ain't going to help you. And a lot of people believe that going to church is going to save them. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a day of reckoning coming where a lot of churchgoers, uh, uh, ch people who go to church three times a Sunday, have missed a Sunday since 1955, but have hatred in their hearts, have bitterness in their heart, hate their neighbors, uh, committing adultery, uh, uh, drinking and smoking and carousing and doing all manner of evil. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not stupid. We serve the mighty God. And so uh, there are people in church who don't want to hear the word. If you're preaching about adultery, they don't want to hear it. They flip the channel or, or, or they start reading a comic book in church or start playing on Facebook while the preacher's preaching. Or if you're preaching about same-sex marriage in church and, 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 and that person is gay or, or has lesbian tendencies, they're not going to listen to you. But ladies and gentlemen, we preach the whole word of God, the whole logos, the whole word of God. Every word of God is pure. We do not pick and choose uh, passages of scripture and we do not avoid passages of scripture because all scripture is given by inspiration of God. God wants us to learn his whole word. By the way, we start this great venture on Wednesday night, the same hookup where you are now. We're starting uh, through the Bible in a year. We're going to go through the Bible in two years. And we want you to start with us with Genesis chapters 1 through 11 starting this Wednesday. So come on and be with us at 7 o'clock uh, p.m. Eastern Time. Eastern Time. Okay? And so the people, uh, they hardened their hearts against God and they manifested their hardness by attacking Moses. And that's the way people are. They're scared to mess with God. So they pick on you. They pick on the preacher. They pick on the pastor. They pick on the choir leader. They will uh, pick on the prophet. They will pick on the evangelist. They're afraid to uh, encounter God. And so they make your life hard on you. You've got members even in your household, many of you, who don't believe in God. And, 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 and they, and they uh, don't like you because you go to church. They don't like you because you attend the online church. They don't like you because you read scripture when they want to watch Steve Harvey. Uh, or you're reading the scripture when uh, uh, they want to watch football. Ladies and gentlemen, you keep on doing what you're doing and keep your mind on Jesus because the day is coming and the day is coming soon that the real blood washed, those who have endured until the end, will be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, some of these wishy-washy folks we've got in our lives, amen, they're, they're, they're not going to make it in heaven. I don't have a heaven to put you in. I don't have a hell to put you in. I preach the gospel, and I preach the word of God. Everybody going to church is not going to wind up in heaven. Everybody saying praise the Lord is not going to wind up in heaven. I know it because the Bible says so. Jesus even said on that day he would say to you, depart from me. I never knew you, but Lord, I fed the hungry in your name. I, I gave out blankets. I gave out prayer cloths. Lord, I, I open up a restaurant for the homeless. I open my home, my home for the homeless. And the Lord is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. So I encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, I beg you, stick with Jesus. Don't be wishy-washy. Don't love the Lord one day and, 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 and don't, hear, uh, don't let him hear from you for another month. There are people who play games with God. There are people who only need God when they're sick. There are people who only need God when they think they're dying. There are people who only need God when they think they're going to lose their job. There are people who only call on the name of the Lord in times of crisis. But ladies and gentlemen, we serve the mighty God and we stick with God uh, 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 no matter what comes, whether it be a hurricane or a tornado, whether it be sunshine or rain, we're going to keep on praising the Lord. So keep on praising God. The 12th verse says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief 
in departing from the living God. I'm happy to see my friend David Carter from Dubai. He's all the way from Dubai, ladies and gentlemen, and he's on this service on a regular basis, and we hear from David a little later on. So the Word of God tells us to take heed. We've got to check ourselves, lest there be found in us an evil heart of unbelief. Well, what is unbelief? Unbelief is not believing in God. Unbelief is not believing the Word of God. That is why it's important to know the Old Testament and the New Testament. Please, please, I beg you, if you're following somebody who only teaches from the New Testament and has thrown the Old Testament out, you need to wake up and smell the coffee and get out of there and go to a place where you can get the whole gospel. Unbelief is disobeying the Word of God. You hear the Word of God, but you're going to do what you want to do. Ladies and gentlemen, how long do you think you can contend with God? God is, is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If God says he will punish for adultery, if God says he will punish for fornication, if God says no liar shall get into heaven, and ladies and gentlemen, we've got liars all. I mean, Washington, D.C. is corrupt with lying people. Uh, 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 from the top office down to the smallest uh, 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 little hut or, 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 or shack. Folks are learning how to lie, how to spin the lies. And now we've got a campaign going on where uh, even politicians are learning how to get away with lying. But lies do not cut it with God. Ladies and gentlemen, the Word of God says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And there are so many preachers today, so many pastors in America today who have shamed themselves. Many of you preachers have shamed yourself by following a liar and, and, and letting his lies lead you. Many of you have corrupted your ministries. You have corrupted people. You have corrupted your integrity. There is a need for repentance in America, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm not talking about other nations. In America alone, there's a need for repentance. God said in his word, he says in Romans chapter 1, I will send you strong delusion that you will obey the lie, believe the lie. Ladies and gentlemen, if you keep on listening to lies and surround yourself with liars and following liars, then God will send a spirit. It's called strong delusion. And that spirit of strong delusion will block your ears from the truth. God says, okay, you want to listen to lies? Then I'll turn you over to the spirit of delusion. And if God turns you over to the spirit of delusion, there is no hope for you. There is no hope. Listen, wake up, people. Wake up. We're talking today about an evil heart of unbelief. Unbelief also is doing your own thing regardless of or what God's Word says. You're going to do your own thing. I'm 21. I'm grown. I pay my taxes. I'm this, I'm that. And I'm going to do whatever. I'm, I'm a man. I'm a woman. Whatever you are. Uh, I'm going to do my own thing regardless. I don't care what God's Word says. Ladies and gentlemen, when you start entertaining those thoughts, you're on shaky ground. You're on shaky ground. Unbelief is ignoring God. You know God is calling you. And you're running from him. You're ignoring him. Some of you have been running from God for a long time. You find anything. Anything that comes up on a Sunday, you're for it. You, you're not going to go to church. Uh, 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 and I know some of you even, uh, I'm not, I probably won't even announce my uh, subject on Facebook or, or um, uh, text message or anymore because some of you now, you carefully read what the message is and you say, oh, well, he's going to be preaching on adultery tomorrow, so I'm not going to tune in on it. Ladies and gentlemen, you can run from God if you want to, but the time is going to come when you will run out of running space. You better stay tuned to this ministry or a ministry where the Word of God is properly being taught. Unbelief is not taking God seriously. Listen, listen, listen. Don't play God. Don't pimp God. Don't pimp God and try to get what, out of him what you can or play with him and use him uh, for your own advantage. God is God. He's holy. He's just. He's righteous. Take him very seriously because every word of God is pure. What God says in his word, whether it's in the Old Testament or the New Testament, 
what God says in his word, God is going to perform. And there are uh, thousands of uh, thousands of Old Testament promises that have not been fulfilled, but will be fulfilled during this New Testament era. That is why you need to know the whole Word of God. I invite you to join me on Wednesday night, starting this coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. We're going to go through the Bible. I guarantee you that when you finish going through this Bible, uh, uh, through, through this series of teachings over the next two years, you'll be so glad you made that choice. Look at what happened to the children of Israel because they disobeyed God. They didn't believe God. God performed miracle after miracle after miracle for them, but they still were determined to walk in sin. God caused water to come out of the rock. He flew a uh, quail uh, over the camp so they could have some meat when they got meat. He gave them manna, bread every day. Uh, they would just pick the bread every day, and, 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 and God healed them. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the clothes that they wore when they left Egypt, those clothes never went out of fashion. For 40 years they were in the wilderness. Their clothes never wore out. Their shoes never wore out. God performed miracle after miracle. Listen, when it was nighttime and the people were afraid of nighttime in a strange land, a pillar of fire went before the camp of Israel. And when the enemy would come upon them, the pillar of fire would, would rest between Israel and the enemy to shut the enemy off. In the daytime, God sent a pillar of cloud to guide the people. This is miracle after miracle. And God wants to do the same thing for you if you will trust him, believe him, commit your life to him, be born again, get saved, stay saved, stay away from the okie doke stay away from unbelievers, stay away from those whose hearts are not toward God. Do not, do not uh, associate uh, yourself, uh, do not, do, do not, Enter into agreement with idols. Do not enter into agreement with people of false religions. You stick with the Lord God and worship God in the purity uh, of, 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 of worship through Jesus Christ. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, and you can be filled with the Holy Spirit, just ask God to fill you and receive by faith then God will guide you. He will guide you through the storm. He'll guide you through the wilderness. But the people, they were determined, no, we're not going to obey God. And even when Moses was on the mountain receiving the Ten Commandments, the people turned to sin. They made Aaron uh, uh, make a golden calf for them, and they said, this golden calf will be our God. He's the one that brought us out of Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't take long for a lot of people to turn from God. And God can do miracle after miracle after miracle. Be, be very sure. Be very sure, my friends. Don't turn from God. Don't turn from God. Remember, it was, it was God who brought you out of that sickness. It was God who delivered you from that disease. It was God who delivered you from that situation. How quickly we forget the living God. Don't forget God. Worship Him. Practice worshiping Him every day. Don't wait until Sunday. Worship God. The Bible says, From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same is His name to be praised. Well, what happened to all those millions of people who came out of Egypt and did not believe God? Well, my friends, the sad thing is this. Out of the three million, approximately three million people, that includes the of the 603,350 soldiers who were uh, set aside and trained for warfare, out of that number, that includes, the, two, the 3 million includes the men and women, the older men and the women and the children. So the number of people was about 3 million people who left Egypt. And that old generation, the the original generation did not enter into the promised land. The Bible says they perished in the wilderness. Verse 17 of Hebrews 3. But with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell 
in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest? But to them that believe not. They didn't believe God. They didn't believe God. Belief means you're going to trust God and you're going to obey Him and do what He says do. You're going to study the Word. You're going to hear the Word of God. And you're going to do what the Word of God, regardless of what kind of legislation your government passes, no matter what kind of uh, the government says same-sex marriage is legal, but God says, oh, no, male and female made he them. A man shall leave his mother and father and cling to his wife. Ladies and gentlemen, don't let this government legislation cause you to lose your salvation. You'll say, well, Pastor Carter, uh, uh, once saved, always saved. Isn't that right? No, that ain't right. That ain't right, ain't never been right, ain't never going to be right. Once saved, always saved, ain't right. The Bible teaches about those who turn from God. The Bible says, any man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom. Anyone who turns back from God, uh, if you choose to turn back from God, God is not going to receive you into the kingdom of God. If you repent, he will. And I hope if you have turned from God, you repent in time. If you're listening today, no matter what country you're in, no matter where you're in, if you're listening today, you can repent of your sins. Tell God you're sorry and get back into the good graces of God and heaven will be your home. But for those who do not believe God and decide it, I'm not going to believe the God. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm a man. I make my own decisions. I've heard people say, uh, God doesn't get up and, and punch the time clock like I do every day. That's arrogance, ladies and gentlemen. You're blowing it in God's face. God has given you the grace, the mercy to get up and go and get a job and to work, and you can't give God one hour a week. It's pitiful. It's pitiful what's happening in this nation. You can't give God one hour a week. And then people come up with these lame excuses. Well, you know, all they want in the church is money. Uh, no, not this church. You don't hear us begging for money. Well, you know, they're all crooks. No, 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 no. Forget all that. Get born again. Get to know God. Get the Holy Spirit to live in you. Get to learn what God has. Let the Holy Spirit be your teacher. Study the scripture. When you're born again, you're a new creation in Christ. And then you can spot those phonies out there. In fact, some of you need to shake off some of those folks who have a hold on you, have a grip on your life. Let God get a grip on you. Let the Holy Ghost get a grip on you. You'll never be the same. You'll never, ever, ever be the same. An evil heart of unbelief can lead a person to hell. To hell. And ladies and gentlemen, hell is a real place. It's growing bigger every day. Hell is getting more residents every day. Believe God. Believe the Word of God. Join me on Wednesdays and let's go through this Bible. Let's look at each book of the Bible and hear what God says. Hear what God says. We want you to avoid hell. God wants you to avoid hell. He did not make the hell for you. He made it for Satan and his demons. You don't have to wind up there. Heaven is the place that God has prepared for believers. So if you've, if you've gotten to the place in your life that you've backslidden, or you're, you're committing sins, and your you're, sin is in your life, and, 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 and you're doing some stuff you, you never thought you'd do, and you don't know how to get out of it, repent. 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 Repent today. Ask God to forgive you. Ask Him to cleanse you of all iniquity. He will do that. Turn from your wicked ways. Repent means to turn, to do a, a turnabout. Do a turnabout. Repent. Confess those sins and turn from them and call upon the name of the Lord. And from this day on, you worship God. You worship Him. Read your Bible every day. Pray every day. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. The Bible says, let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. God will renew your mind. Romans 12, 1 and 2 tells us to renew our mind, and that's through the Word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I share with you this message, an evil heart of unbelief. Don't let unbelief keep you from what God has for you. 
And if you've fallen into unbelief, you can repent today and you can be saved and you can be set free. You can be delivered and you can be healed. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. It is a joy, it's a privilege, it's an honor to share the gospel. I'm not one who just preaches the gospel, but I live it. I live it. I try my best to live it with the help of the Holy Spirit. Well, Pastor Carl, that means you're without sin? No, that does not mean that one bit. It means that when I sin, I confess, I repent, and I ask God to cleanse me, wash me in the blood of the Lamb, and I ask the Holy Spirit to keep me going on. Uh, uh, Kevin Wilson said, don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. Don't let anything keep you back. Don't let anything hold you back. There's a healer. There's a healer. There's a bomb in Gilead. There's a deliverer. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. I'm talking about Jesus, the Son of the living God, Jesus Christ who died on the cross, that you and I have the right to the tree of life, Jesus Christ. Jesus was with the Hebrews in the wilderness. Many of them rejected him. Of that number, of that number, only Joshua and Caleb, of that original generation, the men in that original generation, Joshua and Caleb, made it into the promised land. Ladies and gentlemen, God allowed those people to be destroyed in the wilderness. They died. They died in the wilderness because they refused to obey God. Don't, 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 don't allow that to happen to you. Don't allow that to happen to your family. Tell your family members, we're going to church. Tell them. Invite them to gather with you around your phone or your, your internet on Sunday morning. If you don't have a church home, you come and visit with the online church where Jesus Christ is Lord and the Holy Ghost is moving and God is saving and healing. This is Pastor Carter. Father God, I thank you. I praise you. I bless, I bless your mighty name and worship you. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, whether they're in the United States or in other nations. I pray for those who listen to this ministry via the recording I pray for David Carter and his precious wife and family in Dubai. I pray for the people in the, on the continent of Africa, the people in the Caribbean, people in, in England, people in Asia. I pray for your people all over the world that people will hear the gospel and be saved. And then I pray for these who have gathered live with us this day. Father, we bind every manner of sickness, every spirit of sickness and disease, and we proclaim healing to the people. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In Jesus' name. Hey, if you want to get in touch with me, need our prayer, uh, want to talk about uh, the message, uh, I... You want to talk about the message and how to get saved, how to get filled with the Holy Ghost, or want to join our Bible study, contact me, LeroyCarter69 at Yahoo.com, or give me a, uh, a call, uh, 770-559-9710, or visit my website, www.BackToBasicsMinistriesInc.com, www.BackToBasicsMinistriesInc.com. By the way, on that website, you'll find all of our assignments for the Bible, upcoming Bible studies. Praise God. Uh, be, be cautious because uh, the, the website gives you the Bible studies and the overall view of the ministry, but the connection to receive the online teachings, you are right here on this connection right now. You're right here on this connection or dial 3 one nine five two seven four three two five god bless you we're going to end the recording but stay on dustina's going to give us some a report